très contente d'être... I am very happy to have been born in the Republic of the Congo. I'm very happy to be a woman. I think it's still an asset, because there is still so much to do. You can still build things, be the one who has chosen to set up something new. Professor Francine Toumi is a world-renowned Congolese scientist and malaria specialist. Her country, the Republic of the Congo, is rich with six million inhabitants, oil reserves and raw materials. But infrastructure is weak and 50% of the population lives below the line of poverty. So the immunologist has set herself a new challenge, to transform the Congo through science education and to address the women and young girls of her country, a message she's decided to carry far and large across the Congo. I fight for the youth. I fight so that they can dream positively of this country. Our young people dream of going to Europe, but for what? They idealize Europe, thinking everything is simpler, that they'll have a roof over their heads, that they'll be able to get medical treatment in good conditions. So I want to be ambitious for my country. I want my country to look like a dream, which means I want to build my country. That's it. Brazzaville, Professor Francine Toomey's birthplace, the capital city she chose to return to. More than 10 years ago, she changed paths from an international career to create the Congolese Foundation for Medical Research, the first and only medical research center in the Republic of the Congo. In the heart of Central Africa, the country is, like its neighbors, massively impacted by infectious diseases such as malaria, Ebola, cholera, and COVID. Diseases that also severely affected her country. It's showing good results. They're young people who run this laboratory. The heads of the laboratory are young, young doctoral students and masters. So it reflects the country. The country is young. 70% is made up of young people. And here, I'm proud to be able to say that it is these young people who are doing quality research very seriously in order to be able to prepare for the response to epidemics of infectious diseases. And what environment is it, TB? The scientist has made it her mission to hire a majority of women for her research foundation, an exceptional decision in a world where women represent only a third of all scientific researchers, plummeting to 10% in Central Africa. Among them, Lean, a young PhD student currently working on samples for a COVID study. Today, we're also looking at the persistence of antibodies in subjects infected with SARS-CoV-2. Before starting, we prepare our dilution solution. Lean participated in taking the pre-COVID and post-COVID samples. She then went back to the same post-COVID population to see if there were any antibody cross-reactions. Since we had heard that maybe the African population had been exposed to this virus before the rest of the world. This allowed us to see that there was no evidence of the virus, in any case in these samples, before the COVID pandemic. And Lean is working on her doctoral thesis that she will defend next year. So hopefully she'll become a great, no, I'm sure she will become a great immunologist. I had a dream. My dream was to be a doctor. When I took the exam, I failed and I lost hope. I went to the Faculty of Science and Technology without any specific orientation. At the time, I didn't know a woman named Francine even existed. When I met Professor Francine, it was the first day of classes and I was amazed to see her. A woman speaking with such confidence. I felt I had to meet her. And I said, Madam, I want to be like you. 
She believed in me, encouraged me, and here I am in the field of science thanks to her support. Every day I take her as a model. By her way of doing, she inspires me a lot. Francine to me is a role model, yet nothing predestined her to have such a career. Born in the early 60s, in a modest district of Brazzaville, raised with a strict, sometimes even harsh education, she embraced the role of responsible elder sister to five younger brothers. But the young Congolese woman quickly realized that only education would allow her to transcend her condition. I would say that my father transmitted to me the ambition, the ambition to be, to give the best of myself, and also the ambition to serve others. I lost my father a week after receiving my first and most important award from the African Union, recognition by the continent for my work. And a journalist asked my father what he was very proud of. And he said, obviously, I'm very proud of Francine, but my fear is that she'll take these awards for herself, forgetting to give to others, to transmit to others what she is in the process of receiving. And the more the years pass, the more I understand what he meant. So it's very important for me, this transmission. It's part of my education, of course. But beyond that, I think it must be part of our humanity. A lab director, but above all an educator. Her weekly meeting with her students is a way for her to transmit her knowledge to their eager minds. Each week, two students present their masters. Everyone comments, and like that, it's an opportunity... Oh, careful, Rodrigue. And it's an opportunity to have everyone's contribution, and above all, to know what the others are up to. These are tough meetings. They don't go easy on each other. And so whoever's turn it is, they know that they're going to have a hard time. They're very, very critical. And everyone plays the game. Obviously, for the newbies, I do warn them, don't take it badly, the criticism. I don't think I'm useless. It's the way it goes. And this helps present the most successful work possible in the long run. Hello. In our study, we found that the minimum concentration in the phytotoxic effect was 0.25 nanomolar, and the concentration requires a maximum phytotoxic effect of 1 nanomolar. So what would interest us more there is mainly the positive cases. Does that sound clear? Maybe we can, we can just... When you see this and that and you don't understand, the table needs to be corrected. Legends need to be added. In science, it's a work of sharing, sharing knowledge, sharing experiences, sharing ideas. So already by nature, doing research means wanting to share and wanting to transmit because a very small discovery made today will grow into something more important in 10 years, 20, 30 years later. So I'm trying to train a team that can carry on the work and, above all, make sure these young people thrive here in the Republic of the Congo. Among the students, there's Christina, a PhD student who's travelled all the way from Austria to benefit from the Foundation's expertise in infectious diseases. In an era of global pandemics, the professor's experience has a very real international scope. She's one of the main female um, scientists in the area of malaria research, who is also known in Austria and Germany, throughout Europe, um, in the Central African um, region. And um, this is unique, I would say, for a woman to be so widely known in her scientific field of research. One of my joys is to see that research is not only one way from north to south. Knowledge also goes from south to north. 
And it's nice to see these young people going in both directions. In 2014, after founding the Congolese Medical Research Center, Francine Toumi decided to reach out to as many people as possible. She launched a major science awareness campaign. Its theme, Women at the Heart of Knowledge, is already displayed all over the capital. In a few days, the scientists will launch a first in the Congo, a caravan that will travel the country to carry her message. The caravan is due to set off in only a few days. For extra support in her campaign, the professor has surrounded herself with a dynamic and above all well-dressed team. So, today is Monday. It's the day we've chosen to try and be a little more elegant than the other days. Brazzaville is, so to say, the city of SAP, the society of ambiance makers and elegant people. That's why this morning, I also allowed myself to be a little more elegant. It's a movement created in Congo Brazzaville at the end of independence. So my people who were in Europe after the First World War, when they returned to the country, they were particularly well dressed. Personally, I'm dressed in a houndstooth jacket, houndstooth hat, and then the rest, the harmony, the alchemy of colors is well respected. And if you go lower, I have crocodile skin shoes that match the fabric of my outfit, so it's art. Here is the model of the decorated vehicle, then the different points of action planned for when we go into the field. Mm -hmm. It's the last minute preparations, and I'm in charge of all communication around the caravan, in particular the Jeep which is a key element for this caravan because it will be decorated with the poster of the current Women in Science campaign and this year's theme. It's a very ambitious project because the idea behind it is to conquer women's hearts in particular and the hearts of the Congolese population in general. It's very nerve-wracking to prepare this caravan because it will be a first there are lots of things to see before going into the field, and we're working hard to succeed in this challenge. Francine's team is made up of around 10 people, yet she is the one who oversees everything, down to the smallest details. Oh, this is serious dressing, a suave mixture of fabric. <laughs> Later, we'll go and collect the authorization papers to go to Ntula, and then we'll notify the village chief so that he relays the information to the villagers. Okay. So far, we have focused on the big cities, and now, thanks to this caravan, we will be going deep into the Congo, to places where, until now, it was difficult for us to go because of the logistics. This is the Women in Science Outreach Mobile Campaign, and as we are going to somewhat distant lands, it will also help raise awareness on the road. When you're going somewhere, oh, it's definitely going to catch people's attention, and that's what we want. Her career as a scientist didn't begin in the Congo, but in France, at the Institut Pasteur in Paris. She then went on to work in Gabon, Germany, and then in Tanzania. In 2016, she received the very prestigious Merieux Prize for her research on infectious diseases in Central Africa. She was also appointed to numerous international scientific committees, including the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. When I, a little Congolese girl, received an invitation from Bill Gates saying he would like to have me on his committee to advise on how we should interact in global health, for me that is recognition from my peers. And in 2022, she integrated the prestigious World Academy of Science. 
But one day I was in research management at the time, and in all the meetings Central Africa was being pointed at as the place where nothing was happening. There weren't enough scientists, not enough publications. We were really the last of the pack. And I can assure you that when you are from Central Africa yourself and you hear that, after a while you feel very uncomfortable. One simply asks oneself, do I belong around this table or should I not be in the country working there? Because it's so easy when you're far away to criticize and give lessons to the others who are there, to tell them what to do. I didn't want to be someone who told people all you need to do is, I wanted to do. So I made the decision to organize my return to the Congo. For today's very important event, Francine Toumi flew her son Jean-Cédric over from Germany. He's become an essential team member of the foundation. What is that? It's left from my birthday party. We had a big barbecue with the band, and the idea was that. I'm not keen on it, but I have a feeling it's there to stay. My mother and I are two fundamentally different people. I am extremely outgoing and like to show it. I love being present, talking. I talk a lot and I like to go out and I basically like to communicate at all levels. My mother is a very introverted person. If she can be left alone, she will stay alone. I'm much more chaotic. I'm much more spontaneous. She can also lack flexibility, and I'm all about flexibility. So that also creates sometimes a number of clashes and tensions, even if we are trying to get closer. And now we're working together. It's not always easy. You actually have to, ironically, keep your distances. On the eve of the grand departure, as Jean Cédric is a renowned stylist, he's decided to take his mother to the local market to choose some fabrics for the next tailor-made collection he has planned for her. Let's go, let's go. What are we waiting for? <laughs> My mother's work is absolutely human. I think she could have had many, many other careers, but she ultimately dedicated herself to her country and through that to the world. And it's true that she's very focused on women, and these days women can inspire everyone, myself included. And how much is it? <laughs> Today is the big day. The caravan leaves in only a few hours. Its pièce de résistance, a jeep in the colors of the foundation, was finished in the nick of time. So the vehicle is right there, next to you, with the poster for this year's campaign, Women in the Heart of Knowledge. We were really afraid of missing the branding of the main vehicle of the caravan, which starts today. So we worked all night and we finished at 4 a.m. I'm extremely exhausted, but for the reasons of the cause, we sacrifice ourselves. Knackered. Completely. It was quite a marathon. We said we would get to the end of the challenge. So here's the result, outside. The vehicle's finally ready. We're ready for the start of the caravan.
They print it piece by piece. It's like a puzzle. It's micro perforated. This allows you to see out from the inside. Oh, for advertising, it certainly is advertising. Yes, it'll be a great eye catcher. The women at the heart of knowledge. Ooh, we certainly know about it. The equipment will be installed this morning, so when you arrive at 5 p.m., we can start screening the film. Well, the day I want to get into politics, I'll be ready for it. I'll just get the vehicle out and I'll be ready to go. So it's the start of something, is it? <laughs> we hadn't thought of that at first. But it's true that it's a mobile campaign as such. It's not bad, especially since there aren't that many. So it'll certainly intrigue and force people to read about the campaign. And that's a very good thing. OK, I'll see you later. The first destination is one of the most rural areas of the Congo, and the poorest too. Outside of Brazzaville, most villages have neither access to water nor electricity. The population there is very young. Almost 50% is under the age of 18. Caravan enters the village of Tula, a few hours drive south of the capital. Francine Toumi takes the floor to talk about science. Hello. I am Mama Francine Toumi. And thank you for welcoming me into your home tonight. We'll launch the film and talk afterwards. We're going to ask the technical team to project the film. But when it's time to start the film, Things don't go as smoothly as planned. There's no electricity. A generator had to be transported here. And of course, there are always small hiccups. No sound. The team has to improvise. And it's Steve who takes on the role of commentating and translating the film live. There, she explains the character of her daughter, how she raised her, how she became a scientist. Children, dads and mums, if someone wants to ask a question, there's a microphone there. I didn't go to school, but the film impressed me. If you continue like this, raising awareness, it'll bring honour to our country. This message encourages young people to go to school. Mums and dads should do their best to encourage their children. Do you have good grades in school? Are you top in your school? Are you a girl or a boy? Are you the first in school? Is that true? The distance seems far between the laboratories and the film, and then this place. 
but in fact it was important for me to remind them that this place is not that far away, because I come from exactly the same place, and I was able, precisely through school, to arrive where I am today. And I hope to continue to grow. So it was important to bring this message, because it's a, a true message, which corresponds to reality. All these little children can one day become great scientists and great leaders of this country. All they need is the necessary education. Back to Brazzaville, two days later. So, what happened that day? Comments? And it's debriefing time. And Francine Toumi's tone is somewhat harsher. Who wants to start? There was a problem with the live signal. It is that the modem that we used is the modem for the FCRM. Everyone from the FCRM was connected and the network was no longer enough to continue the live broadcast until the end. We had already considered the possibility of having a problem with a modem, so we knew it was necessary to leave with two. You leave with one and you just say, Madam, it didn't work? I find it unbearable. That annoys me. There were times when I felt like giving up. Why on earth did I end up becoming an entrepreneur, which isn't my job, when I could be quietly working on my science? In Germany, my colleagues, they get up in the morning, they only think of one thing, that is to do their job, develop their scientific ideas, and I get up, and my first thought is how to solve the water problem here. There's no more water in the water tank. So we can no longer do any manipulations. Call the truck, but the company is closed. So who can, where can we find water? And so we're going to spend two hours solving just this problem. OK, thank you. Thank you for all your efforts. And now there's the follow-up to all of that. But... At the end of the year, I am evaluated in the same way as all my colleagues in Germany, who only have one thing to think about. But that's very good. I'm not complaining because we have excellent results, even compared to them. So I'm not complaining. It shows that the potential is there, that we can do a lot more. And then when you see the look of my students, girls and boys, they have the same energy. And they compete for publications, and that makes me happy. When you see that in their eyes, I say to myself, if I give up, what will become of them? I, I just can't. Since its independence in 1960, the Republic of the Congo has experienced many conflicts, from which the country has not yet recovered. In particular, the two years of civil war at the end of the 90s which left more than 25,000 dead and 250,000 displaced. The context of post-colonialism, the humanitarian crisis and climate emergency mean that the country is still today a permanent building site on the path to development and democracy. Even in the capital, much remains to be done, and Francine Toumi is intent on including in her campaign the young, more urban populations. We're going to Makaleli, to my aunt. Stopping off at her aunt's home, in the neighborhood of her childhood, where it all began. Hello, Auntie Christiane. Hello, my girl. How are you? How are you? Fine, and you? How was your weekend? 
I stayed at home. Is that in? He's gone to work. OK. Have you seen the caravan? <laughs> to do the new campaign. Well educated until the age of 16, young Congolese women often drop out of further education, despite all their initial ambitions. Children who do well in school, their dream job is to be a doctor, and for children and for parents too. So there is only one important job in the Congo. That means success, and that's becoming a doctor. That's interesting. The panel of choices is not wide in terms of imagination and dreams. And that is where it is important to broaden the field of dreams for both children and parents. It's incredible. All of them, boys and girls, wanted to become doctors. Just one of them wanted to be a lawyer or a journalist. And one boy an entrepreneur. All the others, doctors. There's even one who expressly said she wanted to serve. She wants to care for others. She wants to serve others. It's very interesting. And she wants to be a doctor to serve. It's beautiful. Access to education for women is a major issue in the Congo, but it also involves other fundamental rights, such as reproductive health. Maternal mortality is very high here, 33 deaths per 1,000 births. In the suburbs of Brazzaville, the Merio Foundation entrusted Francine with the construction of a modern maternity. Let's go see the maternity ward. I don't want to disturb you whilst you're working. I've never actually seen it yet. Of course, I've seen the outside, but I tell myself that they're doing their job. So if I show up, they will say to me, who are you? And what am I going to explain to them? I'm the doctor from next door. Hello. We'll take a look. A quick glance. He's never seen it. <laughs> okay. Super. At the moment, in the center next door, we have a gynecologist who's there. The women come, they're followed, but they can't give birth at our facility. But with the new building, they'll be able to give birth here, so I think it's already a wish come true for them. Here, instead of blocking the corridors, the mothers who come... The families who want to come and see. I see. They can wait here instead of going through to the other side. Okay, 
80% of maternal deaths could be avoided if women had access to quality care as well as emergency obstetric care. In fact, the population is impatient. I am often asked the question, but when, when will it open? When is the key handover? And I say, breathe a little. It will come soon. It is really a gem. A gem in Massicia. So this future maternity ward is in the district of Massicia, which is a popular district, and it's the only maternity ward worthy of its name, after the Juillet Bridge. In terms of modern maternity wards? Yes, in terms of quality, it will be our number one. Yes, yes. It's a nice challenge. We'll see. Because obviously, at first, people will be afraid to come because they'll think it's expensive. I must say I'm a little scared. It does seem a bit big for me to take on, though. It's a completely new dimension, isn't it? Yes. I never expected to have this kind of responsibility. Again, one thing leads to another that leads to another, but you can't say no. When the Merieux Foundation says, well, we want to build a maternity ward with you, it's not normal that women can't give birth, you can't say no. You can only say yes. This evening, a great event is in the works. Professor Francine Toumi is going to present scholarships to eight master's students to finance their studies. But heavy rain threatens the evening. I'm almost counting the number of raindrops. Because when it rains, everything stops. So with the scholarship ceremony, the girls are so excited, and so am I. So we can only scan the sky. The team is relieved. The public has still come out despite the weather. And after you go into the national, the deputies, the secretaries, the consultative, etc. Women and Science is a program that encourages young girls to work for science in the service of peace in the world. I invite Professor Francine Toumi, president of the Congolese Foundation for Medical Research, to talk to us about this year's Women and Science campaign. Let's give her a big round of applause. I am really very happy to see so many of you, and you see me here very moved. Thank you very much for being here. The history of humanity teaches us that several women were voluntarily forgotten during certain awards. I'm thinking, for example, of the Nobel Prize, for which several men have appropriated without any scruple the work carried out and supported by women. This is called the Matilda effect. We have a heavy responsibility to ensure that this unhealthy phenomenon doesn't repeat itself. Today's laureates are young girls full of ambition who dream of transforming their environment and building a more beautiful Congo and a better Congo. We are going to shed light on these young women so that they become role models for other young people of their generation and generations after. This is our way of contributing to a paradigm shift that we are calling for.
Today, the caravan's heading towards one of the treasures of the Congo. Set in its still-preserved tropical forests, a gorilla sanctuary in the heart of the jungle. On the road, the caravan stops to buy a speciality of the bush. These are caterpillars. I used to go myself into the bush, to the savannas, to look for them. So when I'm back in the village, it reminds me of all of that. I'm very happy to have them. And so how do you cook them? You wash them, you put them in a pot with salt, a little water, and you cook them. In less than 20 minutes, it's ready to eat. You fastened your life jacket well. Why is that? Because I can't swim. Oh, you can't swim either? Are you afraid of water? A little, a little. I'm really not keen at all. If I fall in... If I fall in, it's over. I'm going to drown. The Congolese scientist is also the head of Pandora, an international network that brings together 13 countries and 23 institutions in Europe and Africa. Public health and environmental professionals of all different and complementary fields have joined forces in this multilateral approach to anticipate future pandemics. The world evolves. Traveling back in the day from Africa to America would take months, but today it takes a few hours. So everything goes very quickly. And the viruses that were locked up, let's say sealed in the forest in a very particular contained ecosystem, by opening the roads, we also open the roads to the viruses, so we can expect new viruses to infect humans, perhaps more or less dangerously, more or less effectively. And this is where science must work to be able to detect them as soon as possible and to be able to control them, contain them, eliminate them as soon as possible. Do you see the gorilla? He's going to rush to the other side. He's still eating. Is it good to be back in the field? We gain a lot of experience in the field. You learn a lot more by practicing than by staying put, waiting for samples in the lab. Whereas when you're in the field, you know the reality and all the contours of your study. You know, you really master it correctly. You take part in a wider scope of things. It's necessary to see so as to put it into perspective afterwards. How to analyze the samples, take into account what is happening in the animal, which lives next to the individuals whose samples we collect. The gorillas, especially the great apes, are here. They're protected, and obviously in the protection, there are infections that pass from man to animal. And for example, for COVID, before going to see the great apes, it was necessary to ensure that no individual was infected, neither the caregivers nor the visitors. So as part of their protection, we have to make sure that well, we don't contaminate them, just as they also don't contaminate us. And what happens if the branch breaks and he falls in the water because they don't like water? Can he swim? N not at all? He's showing off. He's being clever. Look at me, sitting on my branch. <laughs> Je voudrais 
I really hope I have smoothed the way for those coming next. If I had given up, we wouldn't have had such results. I hope they will have results 10 times, 100 times better than mine. That's really what I want. The caravan will continue its journey throughout the Congo over the course of the next year, reaching out to the Congolese populations, raising awareness, allowing young women to access science. This is the driving mission of Professor Francine Toomey's ambition, and her vision may not end there.